<laughs> hey, g'day everybody, it's Matt here from Metcalf. So today we're going to have a look at this. This is called the Little Terrier. Uh, I'm going to look at the quality of it, what you can use it for, and how to use it, and is it a good product? I don't know. Uh, yes, I do know. I've had it for three years, and I'm going to tell you my experience with it. Okay, so first of all, let's have a little bit of a close-up look at this little uh, terrier. And we can see this is the cutting end, and what it consists of is two cups there and there. And pretty much what it does is it spins around and it just scoops out the wood. So these cups can actually be taken off, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so I've had this actually for about three years. And I haven't actually had to replace these cups or and I haven't actually had to spin them around either so when you spin these cups around you, all you need to do is you need to loosen that off and then you'll need to just spin it around a little bit and that that means what will happen is there will be another sharp edge on it and then you tighten it back up. Okay, so I'm gonna take the whole screw out just to show you the blade and the actual screw as well because there's some important things you need to know about that. Okay, so there's the screw and there is the blade there. But, and you'll notice that there's actually an angle on that torque screw right there. This is important and I'm gonna show you why just now. When you're putting it back on, you need this to be in the perfect position. Okay, so screw the torque screw back into it with the blade in place. So we're screwing up here and you want to get it quite tight because what can happen, see how that is actually flush? What can happen if you don't have it tight enough, that will be not flush right there. First of all, you take this little piece here and then you put it into the Dremel like that. And then you take this Put your finger on the stop button, wind that on with your fingers, goes on quite a long way, and then do it up with the spanner. Oh. Remember, all of this is done while it's unplugged because this one you don't want to mess around with. Okay, so that's it all ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to put the little terrier up against the extreme cut saw and the little terrier really rips through the wood it also takes chips out as opposed to producing dust however i would say the cutsel is a lot more controllable and you can put it on a flex shaft which you can't do with a little terrier so it is a lot easier to use okay so i'm going to talk a little bit about what you can actually use this for and you can use it a lot of people use it for bonsais and all of that kind of stuff. Actually, I think the majority of people use it for bonsais. By the way, like I just did a search on it and uh, they cut away dead wood on it. I can't really talk to that. I don't know how good it is at that. I can say that it is excellent quality. I do know that. Uh, the metal on it uh, is not wearing out or anything like that. The blades on it are really good and they're designed really well so you can actually like turn them around and just the cutting, like I've been using this for ages, I think you get like about 30 hours of average use out of one edge and then you can turn around and use it again. Don't quote me on that. I'm going to leave a link below to the company that sells these. I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, and it's just a small company. I, I don't think they're a big company that sells these. But they are expensive. I think they retail for around £50 in England. I, I spent 150 New Zealand dollars on it, which is about right, um, with import taxes and all that kind of stuff. But what I do use it for a lot, and is hollowing out, and I do do a bit of this, and it's really, really good for that. I also use, for bigger jobs, I'll use the Arbitec ball grinder, then go in with this, and then go in with the cut saw as well. It's just like a really, really good way to sort of hollow out as you're continually sort of like using less and less aggressive kind of tools. So I also, what is cool on these is you can tap the surface on them and you can leave these really cool, it's kind of like eggs, 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 eggs work. You know what I'm saying, eggs work. My father used to do a lot of it actually. Uh, so it's a little bit like that. 
which is very cool. And I used to make a lot of earrings and use that effect on them, which is cool. And I made some brooches with it, which is pretty cool. It sort of like paid for itself in the long run, but I sell my stuff. So, you know, if you're, if you're a hobbyist, mm, I'm not sure if you would actually purchase this just for the odd job. You'd have to be like a bonsai person or somebody making a lot of cups, a lot of texture work. It's good for that. And what I would recommend is when you're making something like this with a hollow in it, you clamp it down to the to the bench and you use this thing with two hands. Okay, so I hope you found this video helpful. I know this isn't a big, um, big giant seller, and that's why there's not very many videos out there. So, yeah, I know a lot of different companies make similar tools as well. I don't see a lot of people using these, and I think the reason is because in wood carving, um, especially like Dremel carving, you kind of like like the stuff that's on the flex shaft, and you can sort of like get into things a little bit easier, a lot of more maneuverability. This is. Uh, a little bit restricted it takes off massive chunks and you've got to be careful that it doesn't hit your fingers mm. yeah. right okay i hope that's helpful see you guys uh in the next video let me know if you've got any questions and i'll try and answer them